everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Jay Wakefield and I've been recently watching an episode of the Computer Chronicles. Now this episode was, um, let's see if I can pull it up. Now this episode had um, quite a lot on it. Um, yeah, Computer Guide 1999, year 2001. I don't think so somehow. Um, among other things, including an iBook and a folding keyboard, it had a <coughs> segment about a compact Armada V300 with a sort of slice that kind of um, separates the machine from... Well, the, the slice has got the DVD, ROM and floppy drives, but the machine is ultra-portable. Now, yes, I was drooling over this laptop, and no, I don't have one. But I do have one of these. Now, Blue Planet 64 watchers will recognise this as the Compact Armada 4131T. Um, or as my uh, friend Randy calls it, the lunchbox. And you'll see why in a wee minute. You can actually carry it around by its battery, although probably best not to do so. But um, once folded down... The battery will actually levitate the machine, so it's a wee bit better to type on. So let's have a look at it. So on the left we have a Kensington lock part, hard disk caddy, two PCMCIA slots, headphone, microphone and audio in, a Swatchable floppy disk drive. <clears throat> Which can be an eject button. The uh, power socket. And on the back, <coughs> we have a PS2 mouse keyboard port. Parallel IEEE 1284 printer port. Serial port, VGA port, and the TV out. So, let's have a wee look at this machine. I'm going to plug in a mouse, because I find that the mouse is easier to work with than the tiny wee trackpad. So let's um, just, um, let's just um, make sure it's in properly if I plug it in here. Um, my advice to anyone using a computer is if a PS2 mouse doesn't look to be doesn't feel like it's gonna go in, don't force it as you will bend the pins. These pins are really, really quite fragile and can be quite easily bent out of shape. So just make sure you're lining it in properly and if it's meant to go in, it will. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it's a more modern USB mouse connected to a PS2 connector. So let's have a look then. That is a quite, quite a big battery, and yes, it still has life in it. So this Compact Armada is um, armed with the grey keyboard, which um, is a signature move for Compact with their portables. Um, for quick keys, it can be programmed to open up any application or what have you. This is a Pentium 133 MHz processor with 32 megs of RAM and a 3 gig hard disk necked from a ThinkPad 390. So let's switch it on. Now what's going to happen here is the machine's going to complain that the time's not been set. There we go, 162 system options not set. If you just leave it, <coughs> it'll switch itself off and then on again. I'm gonna 
bump this up to the full screen. I press it. To do that on a compact armada, it's FN and T. You'll see the resolution changes. Turns out that I was running Windows 3.1 and 95 on here. So, um, well, let's have a look at them both. I thought I'd actually got rid of the Windows 3.1 installation on here. <coughs> I have had a couple of problems with memory usage and what have you. Now, this is configured to use the internet. Um, but there's no network attached. And it's also configured to use a PC card CD-ROM drive. Anyway, here's Windows for Workgroups 3.11. Um, yeah, if you all don't mind, I'm going to try and find the volume control on here. And see if I can bump up the sound. Um, not sure how I'd be able to do that because I've forgotten how to do it on here. <laughs> ah, yeah, I think I know. There we go. Ah. F N and F five. So this is Windows for Workgroup 3.11. Um, as you can see, a very diligently installed office on it. Not. I forgot. Oh no, there it is. For some reason the office uh, bar didn't load up. There's uh, Word 6. <laughs> Used to use this at school. Oh, this brings back a lot of memories. 800 by 600 pixel resolution display, 16-bit uh, colour. You can't even complain. Um, let's have a look at what else is on here. We've got Netscape Navigator, Wimplay for MP3s, some games, and I do believe... Let's have a look. Microsoft Net Show. So, I think what I'm going to do is plug in a CD-ROM and network card, and um, I'll jump cut back. However, because um, before I do any of that, I'm just correcting a wee minor oversight. I'm installing the Microsoft Windows Entertainment Pack on here. How I can have forgotten to do that, I really do not know. And that was a really stupid thing to do. So this is me having restarted the computer. I've plugged in a network card and a CD-ROM drive. So, um, let's have a look. <clears throat> For all those wondering, this uh, laptop uses a Cirrus Logic graphics card. And um, <coughs> it has win mode, exactly like the Packard Bell Legend 406 CD. Obviously, now this would normally fly along at 133 MHz, but because I'm using Ethernet, it's got to take some time to start everything. Because that's what it likes to do. So let's just sit here. Maybe sing a couple of songs. Rare bog at Upland Bog, the bog down in the valley, oh. Okay, enough of that. <coughs> so here we have the login screen. Now, some of you might not ever remember this from Windows for Work Groups 3.1. One, I never used WFW on a network, but um, now I am. So um, 
let's log on. That's me logged in. Let's um, close this down. Let's close this down as well. And let's open this up. There we go. And that's us online. Just to prove this is working. Obviously it'll take a while. Computers like these aren't meant to access the internet nowadays. And obviously this WordPress site was never built for a browser so vintage. But everything's there, we've got the main menu, welcome, computer repair, JWC news blog. And there's even a picture of me with hideous brown hair. On me that colour is hideous, is all I'm saying. I've had it redone. It's now, it's now black. My friend Cassie did it for me. But yeah, so the internet is uh, very well alive on this computer in Windows 3.0. One. Unfortunately, I don't think it handles it very well due to the non-preemptive multitasking and the fact that the internet is quite resource heavy on a machine like this. <coughs> I'm going to have to be really, really careful about how I close out of Internet Explorer. Because, I mean, I think... It's actually crushed. Keep scrolling down. Oh, there we go. Be a perfect connection though for access and bulletin board systems. Okay, so let's have a look at something else. Something else then. So this is Putt Putt Goes to the Moon. This, is, this will be the first time I run it on this computer. So I must install it. So I'm just going to go do a quick install. A new version of Win32 is installed. You can install an older version. Do I wish to install an older version? No. So it needs Win32. 256 color driver, video color driver, not installed. Well... It says that, but it'll run happily with a 16-bit colour driver. So, I mean, the install process was pretty painless. So... <clears throat> Clicking OK. What will happen now is it will forget how to be a CD-ROM drive. Now it's asking, do I want to register? Let's click OK. Thank you for installing Pop But. And there's a new program group created. And if I want to actually um, play this software, I just double click on the icon. And then away it goes and plays. First off, it will test the CD-ROM drive speed. <coughs> so, obviously, this will be able to enhance the game based on the CD-ROM drive in use. 
I believe this likes to have a double or higher. Billy Cars Legend Fordle 2 CD has a double speed CD drive and it works fine with that. My Fordle 6 CD did originally come with a quad speed, but unfortunately it died. This, I believe, is... I'm not too sure how fast it is. It's a PC card CD-ROM drive of some sort, made by Arcos, who are now well known for making uh, tablets. Um, and it can also be used as an audio CD player. Put some batteries in it, put some headphones in it, you've got yourself a makeshift CD player. Okay, so now that that's happened, it will get me into trouble for not having it set to 256 colours. Don't worry about that. There we go. Junior Adventures. And then it'll start. Unfortunately, the sound on this machine is a wee bit wee, dear Windows 3.1. So you can barely hear it. So I'm so excited. Mr. Firebird invited Pepe and me to the fireworks factory. I bet this is going to be a great day. Very excitable dog. Basically, this is um, this is just one of these point and clicky games. You know, basically, it's for kids. You know, you putt putt goes to the moon due to Pep getting excited, catching a butterfly, hitting a button that um, Mr. Firebird told them not to press or whatever his name is. Um, here's the fireworks factory. So what I'll do is I'll exit out of this because we can uh, explore this a wee bit more in Windows 95 when we've got better sound. So this is Windows 3.1. Now, no DOS powered machine would be complete without a respectable array of some DOS games. Slash P, so we'll have a look at what's on here. quite a few things for me to show you. So, um, the first thing I want to show you is WordPerfect. Now, WordPerfect is an amazing program. It's, it's just a regular word processor for MS-DOS. However, it's kind of special to me as this word processor, because I did use it to write up my life storybook. When I was nine years old and I was in foster care, social services in Bradford, I was fostered in Bradford in England, which is... Um, yeah, and then they all speak a wee bit. They all speak a bit strange down there. Um, <coughs> and uh, they decided that we should all write a life story book of basically, which includes um, people who I now have in my phone book, thanks to the wonders of uh, social networking. Right, so, I mean, they said that you could do it any way you wanted, and me being me, I said I'd like to do it on the computer. So they sorted out a computer for me to do it on. It was a 286 of sorts. And it had a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. It was made by Vector Computers of Scotland. Well, no wonder I like the uh, Vector Computer at my school. It's Scottish. I tell you. Brilliant. The thing's made better in Scotland. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think pads are made in Scotland. Or they were. So, I used WordPerfect to make my life story book. So now this program does have quite, you know, it's, it's quite, I like it and the reasons are quite personal to me. So, now let's play one of, oops, let's attempt to play one of Billy's favourite games. Sky R Xmas. Let's have a look. Um, 
Gay Xmas. Oops a daisy. Not enough memory. You remember me talking about not enough memory? I've not quite got the hang of um, DOS memory management. So let's play Mario and Luigi instead. Oh, by the way, I know how to set up Windows 386. The easiest way is um, DOS will like to load itself high. Don't do that. And config.sys put DOS into the lower memory. As you can see, the sound has enhanced itself. I don't know why it does that. In DOS and not in Windows 3.1. This is basically a rip-off of Mario. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank B Bishop PCM. So you do get a shout out in this video, Brandon. Um, and I can totally understand why you left our Packard Bell group, because to be honest, so have the rest of us. The group is no longer. But um, Brandon actually, um, rec well, he basically reviewed this game on his um, IBM PS2 Model 80, the lucky son of a gun. Um, <coughs> yeah, and, and it does... It doesn't run too slow on this. It is, um, I mean, his uh, IBM PS2, I'm not sure. I think it's a 386. This is a Pentium, which basically means I can die quicker. So that that is DOS. It's, it's really, really fantastic. Okay, let's go into Windows 95. Let's do that. And we will basically turn this computer, by going into Windows 95, I think I'm going to turn this computer into something that Billy Corr will realise that he absolutely cannot live without. <coughs> this machine was built in 1997. The bio date is the date of my ninth birthday. And, um... Well, it's a Windows 95 machine. Obviously, it has Windows for Workgroup drivers. And it probably could run Windows 98 if you don't mind me coming round to your house and telling you why I think you're an idiot. Now, that doo doo sound that you heard was um, PC card slots. It detected the network card, and now it's detected the CD ROM drive. Okay. So, as with Windows 3.1, there's network installed, and there's a CD drive installed. Obviously, Windows 95 can handle it a lot. Ooh. As you can tell, Windows 95 is a lot better with them things. And um, it's realised that the date is completely wrong, so let's reset that now. So today is Thursday the 8th, no, sorry, 9th even, and the time is, it's 18.10. And what I can do... So here's Windows 95. A few different things on here. I have Works 4.0, which makes this the third compact computer that I own that is Windows 95 powered and has Works 4 on it. The other two, of course, being the um, 7750MT and the Compact Presario 2240, which is down in England, which, as soon as I get it up here, you can, be, you can rest assured I will be doing a video. I have Publisher for Windows 95 on here as well. Absolutely brilliant program. I love Publisher. And of course, 
Word for Windows 95. Well, the whole Office suite, the whole gamut. <coughs> this is a brilliant version of Office. It's simple like Office 4.2, yet 32-bit, so you can give long file names and what have you. And it'll work with a 64-bit version of Windows 7, if you should choose to do such a thing. And I've even put a couple of Parker Bell items on here. So there's uh, Encarta 96 Encyclopedia, Chameleon Web Browser. I'm not too sure that that actually works. And I've just went to uninstall it, so well done me. Now there is another program I would like to show you on here. Kidpex! I used to play this at school. Well, I went to a school for the visually impaired and every week we would have... Um, Integration with a mainstream school. We would go to a mainstream school to basically have some mainstream experience. And while there, they had an Apple Mac performer, I do believe, with KidPix installed. Now, little did I know at the time, there was a Windows version. And that's the version I have here. So you can go on KidPix, you can draw stuff, you can uh, do... You can do... All different fancy effects. Um, you can do some spirals. And you can do letters of the alphabet. It'll actually tell you them. A. B. C. D. F. D. E. F. F. G. I. H. I. J. Now, one of the best things about kid picks. I like how you can move stuff. See, my former flatmate's boyfriend is in the removal business, so I don't need that. I'll just get him to do it. Give him business. And you've got stamps. So I've got a wee pickup truck. Can use that. Can be towing away a Z. Look at that. So you can pretend like um, it's a trailer park boys. It's awful greasy, Julian. I don't want to go out and steal those Zs. This is just too greasy for me. I'd, I'd rather be working at home on, on my carts, eh? Now, there's other cool things in Kid Pitch, so you can, when you undo, you've got zany sound effects. But I think my favourite things are the delete options. You've got um, typical eraser, um, both large and small circles and squares. Or you have... Dynamite. <laughs> Basically, it um, appeases the redneck within us all. Billy Corr's personal favourite is this one. Wow. Mm. No, it isn't. Oh, no. I'm just trying to think which it is, actually. <laughs> I remember this one from school. Which was a date one? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That's the one. And I would tell yeah. you the date. And then I'd move it over, and then you've got a nice clean slate. Or you could just go under. Yikes! And there we go. Got the picture back. So. Let's go back to Pat Pat, shall we? 
So again, this will be the first time this has been run in this version of Windows on this laptop. So I'll just plot the CD tray closed. I'll wait a minute, I'll not sing any Scottish folk songs. Speed bunny boat, like it, never mind. Um, so now, what we have here is a screen. Basically, Windows 95 has a feature called autoplay, which is uh, basically in every version of Windows from 95 upwards. And as soon as I put that CD in, Windows detected there was a disk and loaded up this screen. Basically telling me Pup Pup was in the drive and did I want to play it or did I want to exit? So I'm going to click play. Give the disk drive a minute to wake up. Now, again it'll read the speed of the CD drive. So, um, my bonny lies over the ocean. My bonny lies over the sea. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll stop. You can't shove your granny off the bus. <clears throat> and once again, I've been given a row for not having the right colour settings. The unmistakable sound of a junior adventure loading. And now we've sung. Why, what happened? What happened? And what happened when he got there? What about Pat Pat? What do you want him to do? Well, I do hope so, Pup Pup, because I'm on a really high dose of antidepressants. I'm not knowing what a great day is since that day that my friend came over and dyed my hair black. <laughs> so basically, it's just a case of, um, come on, go, go to the factory. Come on, go to the factory. Maybe not. Maybe you don't want to go. Or you could just go there. There we go. Hi, Mr. Firebird. Welcome, Pug Would you like to help me make a skyrocket? You bet. I'll give you a hand. But be careful not to touch that lever. It's for my big secret experiment. Wow! Just show me what you want to do. So basically what you do is you start off in the fireworks factory. You, and basically you press, you've got a control panel of buttons. Or you can click on the um, squidgy bottles. And if you do that. Right, stars. And once you've done that, you press any one of these buttons on the control panel, and the machine will put a, will put um, the top on the fuselage, and then of course, it'll test it. So you can obviously see the firework in action, and you can do this as much as you want. You know, this this is brilliant, brilliant tool for kids to experiment and just learn about pushing different buttons and seeing what happens. I think it's nice. Obviously, if you want to actually continue with the story, a la Pup Pup Goes to the Moon, click on the window. Pretty butterfly. And then of course, Pep was getting excited. 
excited about it before. See, and here's something that... What's happening? Here's something that Billy and I were talking about. And I wonder where Pep got that space hat from. So let's um, click the arrow and then Pup Pup will keep on going and eventually he'll find his way onto the moon. Hang on, Pep! We're going in for a moon landing! So you'll have noticed how I didn't need to install Put Put in Windows 95. That it just plays straight from the CD ROM. Oh my goodness, I'm on the moon. How will I ever get home? And of course, your mission is to do stuff to help Put Put get home. So we'll uh, go out of that for the mean meantime. And let's play some more DOS games. One of the most respectable DOS games is this, Wolfenstein 3D by ID Software. Let's make it easy, because I'm an editor. <coughs> so this, this game is a lot like Doom, because it was basically made by the same people. And uh, my best friend at school used to play this uh, all the time on uh, the Olivetti machines, the Wii 386s that they had at school. And I was amazed that those machines, I mean, it was the machine that they used to play it on was really very slow. So it was quite a nice surprise when I saw this playing on it. At least I think it was a 386. seen it here first. This is a secret passageway. So that's Wolfenstein. Let's have a look at some more. So we can actually have a look. We've got Amazon, Arkanoid, Bookshelf 94, G Point, Cardsoft, Best of Windows Entertainment Pack. So, I was going to try and run Sky Road's Christmas special. And I think I should be able to on here. There we go. Jeez, oh, that's quite loud. To guide your wee space buggy into, um, well, just around the track. Avoid obstacles. Jump. Oh, and the red squares are explodables. So, um, it's not really the best on this screen, I have to be honest. 
So, um, yeah, I'm finding it really difficult to do one-handed, but then again, I find it difficult to do it two-handed. I just cannot do course three at all. Oh, this is terrible. But, I mean, this is an amazing DOS gaming machine. It really, really is brilliant. One meg video card. And it is absolutely fantastic. I do like this machine a lot. A simple, I mean, just the simpleness of it. You know, it's, it kind of just reminds me of the old laptops at school that we used to have. Like the Acer Extensor 355. Even though this is an active matrix, that was a passive matrix. So, DOS games, yes. Sea sickness pills, mandatory. Whereas with this one, yes, the screen could do with more contrast. But at least it's an active matrix. Oh goodness, I'm so glad it's an active matrix. <laughs> active matrix. So let's um, let's get out of this now, because I just cannot play this, and I'm just going to embarrass both myself and probably the developers of the game. So let's have a wee look at um, device manager on here. So it's uh, J. Wakefield registered to J. Wakefield Computers, and it's a Pentium with 32 megs of RAM. It has um, Cirrus Logic 7548 PCI, laptop display panel 800 by 600. Um, for some reason, that's not installed, which is odd. And Search Logic PCI card thing. ESS 1788 plug and play. That's the sound card. <coughs> and if we actually go into the display properties, um, you can actually uh, adjust where the hotkey thing, the hotkey on, dis on screen display comes up. <laughs> and we also find out it's got one meg of video memory. So what do I think of this machine? I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I love it. I absolutely love it. Brilliant processor, brilliant screen, brilliant just everything, you know. And the speakers aren't bad as well. It's got stereo speakers, which um, probably wasn't the most common thing for a laptop of this age. You know, I really, really, really do like this machine, and I'm so glad I got it. Yes, I had problems with its original floppy drive, but I managed to replace it. Absolutely perfect. I really do like this laptop. Should you get one if you're a vintage computer collector? I think so. <coughs> if you don't want to game on the actual screen, well, you can always plug it into a monitor. Or better yet, plug it into your television using the TV out. So, with that in mind... This is this has been me, Jay Wakefield. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Instructions on how to do so will follow. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will stop by and see my next videos. Seriously, did you really think I would uh, let the video go without actually installing Microsoft Entertainment Pack under Windows 95? I don't think so.